about one here and today it's I look like death <laughs> um, I'm not the wellest of people right now guys but I still want to bring out a video for you guys um, <clears throat> literally only living on paracetamol and stuff like that but nonetheless I look like death and I want to uh, bring you guys a video nonetheless guys like I want to still bring you guys videos so uh, today we are going to be talking about the new Time Lords, um, specifically the monsters, like I'll go into the traps as well, but specifically the monsters we're going to be talking about because there are four new Time Lord monsters, some of them are really interesting and I just wanted to make a video about them and give my opinion on them. So today we're going to be talking about the new Time Lord monsters and I'm going to be giving my opinion on them while I look like death. <laughs> oh, I've got dark under my eyes and everything. I, I, look, I look so bad, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be talking about that and we're going to have fun with it because the new Time Lord support is really interesting. It's really cool. And I feel like um, with the new Time Lord support being around, it might even give Time Lords an opportunity to actually be a viable deck as it may maybe a tier 2, um, at least tier 3 deck, I doubt they'll be lower than that, um, but yeah guys, uh, let's get into this with the first Time Lord, which is the Fire one, and I'm just going to get go right off the bat by saying all the standard effects, many hours later, Time Lords have the effect, cannot be switched from the deck, shuffle themselves back during the standby phase, uh, cannot be destroyed by battle or effects and when and you take no battle from battle damage, and they can be normal summoned without tributes if you control the monsters, those are all the standard effects. Um, Mixion, it, the Time Lord, is a fire Time Lord fairy effect monster, zero attack, zero defense, same as every other Time Lord, level 10, same as every other Time Lord, at the end, now it's actual effects that's different from every other Time Lord. Um, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battles, halve your opponent's life points. This is the interesting one that I wanted to talk about most in this video and why I'm mainly making the video. Um, essentially, this says if you attack with your opponent on 8k, they lose 4,000 life points. Pretty good, am I right? Pretty good, like, just straight up 4k life points out of nowhere. Now, when I saw this effect, I was honestly thinking, what? Neg 4k? Burn decks have more support now. And it's annoying to see that Chain Burn has basically gotten new support in the version of this, whereas if you open, like, just, a, just desserts or a... Or a booby trap, no, not booby trap, or like a mirror wall, or a dimension wall, or a magic cylinder, anything can kill you at that point. Because Chain Burn runs so many burn cards that they can burn you so easily, and this Time Lord is going to make burn decks viable. It's going to make burn decks more viable, just because of that effect that says, if this card battles, half your opponent's life point during the end phase, during the end of the battle phase. And when I saw that effect, I was like, honestly... Lord Chainburn is going to be good again, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about the, this card in the video, because this card gives the deck a single-handed way to just burn your opponent for 4k and then leave the rest to your back row. So, that's the first card um, that I wanted to talk about. Mitchie on the Time Lord, Chainburn support essentially, where, oh, I'm going to deal you 4k, then my back row is going to kill you with the rest of them. What you're going to do is how the game works now, and Chain Burn's basically been boosted to the next level. But yeah, um, Michion, you're a Chain Burn support, I won't like you, and I'm going to probably have to side him on a Iwato now. Wait, does he even burn? No, he just halves your opponent's life points. Just halves your opponent's life points. Uh, next Time Lord is... Uh, Harrion, the Time Lord, level 10 Earth effect, same attack, same defense, 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, 
uh, same effects as in cannot be special summoned uh, from deck, cannot be special summoned from deck, normal summon without tributing, Sabada, um, Balada, those same effects. Um, it's actual, it's effects that we care about though, which is different from the rest is, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, activate this effect. If your life point, if your current life point is lower than your opponent, opponent's life points, inflict the difference as damage to your opponent. They just keep doing this, don't they? Um, basically this is another one of those things where, oh, Okay, well, now I'm going to have to deal with this. And it's like, it's another chain burn effect. And I don't like that, guys. Like, having a two chain burn based effects. Like, literally, chain burn now with this effect can just be like, oh, I'm going to sit back, let you hit me, summon this guy, attack you, and then burn the difference and activate. Like, if I'm on, like, a thousand life points, activate, I don't know, a just deserts to burn my opponent to death or... Um, I don't know, what's that spell card that burns for a thousand damage, that one? Um, like, they're just going to activate anything that can literally burn you to death. So it's another chain burn support, and Time Lords are looking to be on the chain burn side of the support now. So, um, Harry on the Time Lord, two time, two chain burns support supporters, in my opinion. Harry and Michelon are both Time Lords burn support. Konami... Don't make burn support! You dickheads! I don't like this! Um, but yeah, uh, Harry on the Time Lord is essentially just a burn support card as well, where if you battle, reduce your opponent's life points to the same as yours. So it's kind of it's kind of like a grass in, in the sense where instead of milling, it's it revolves life points instead, where it just puts you on even terms. Um, I feel like this effect on a Time Lord is fine, uh, personally, but being able to use this in a chain burn deck again, it's not really that good in my opinion. But we're gonna have to deal with it. Um, it's still a, it's a viable option for chain burn as well, which I don't really like. Uh, but yeah, chain burn always has these options, which is annoying, especially time lords. I'm surprised how good time lords actually do in chain burn. Um, the next time lords are uh, is Refian the Time Lord. It's a wind, zero attack, zero defense, same effects as all the others. Um, it's only a different effect is at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of one face up monster your opponent controls. That mo that card <clears throat> that this card battled this turn. Um, so if this card battled, inflict damage to your opponent's life points equal to the attack. Attack of one face-up monster, your opponent would trust this card balanced. Okay, so this card attacks something in a battle phase. If it has 3k, you're taking 3k. More chain burn support. More chain burn support. More chain burn support. Um, I honestly just feel like Time Lords are just chain burn support oriented guys. Like honestly, um, the amount of chain the amount of burn burn cards in Time Lords that I've seen right now is just Time Lords are the new chain burn. Honestly, that's that's a discussion video for another day. But um uh right now what I'm seeing is like all the the first three Time Lords that I've seen so far um in this discussion video. One I actually already knew about the others I didn't really pay too much attention which was the half 1000. Um but the new Wind Time Lord and the new Earth Time Lord honestly being able to incorporate them in a burn deck is just insane, and it seems like Konami are making Time Lords more oriented towards the burn factor, and I feel like they're doing this because... Um, I can't remember if they had these effects in the anime, personally, but I think one of the main reasons they're doing this is because of the uh, World Championships last year, where Chain Burn actually won, and there was a Time Lord in there, which did burn damage, so I feel like that might be one of the reasons why... This is why this is happening, but um, yeah, more burn support. Time Lords are burn dot deck now. They're going into burn dot deck. Get your Hana H Amano um, Hanawatas ready. Get your Hanawatas ready. Um, next time, Lord. Uh, hopefully, this one will get me a little more interested because so far I've just seen burn, burn, burn. Yeah, free burns. Burn. 
Um, okay, so the next one is Gabrion the Time Lord. Uh, zero attack, zero defense, water, same effects as all the rest, level 10. Um, effects that we actually care about. Uh, at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, shuffle all cards your opponent controls into the deck. Then your opponent draws, draws that same number of cards that were returned to their deck. I like that. Actually, I like that a lot, actually. Like, that's an interesting one. Um, actually, I can actually say something about this. Uh, so, Gabriel the Titan Lord. Uh, this effect is actually pretty dear, pretty interesting to me because it's essentially a reset to your opponent's board. Um, say your opponent has no hand cards in hand, you're playing against Pendulum, something like that. Um, you attack them with Gabriel the Time Lord. They're going to lose all the resources that they've made. So, And I believe um, shuffle your opponent's cards into the deck. Then your opponent draws the same number of cards that were returned to their deck. So if you're returning extra... This is even better against cards that play extra deck cards. Um, simply because, uh, say you're playing against the decks uh, like... Pendulum Magicians, for instance. Say they've made a board with a... With a D, with a Odd Eyes uh, that they've already used, a Naruto and an Electromite or, or a Deco Talker, you can essentially attack. They're gonna lose you. They're gonna lose all those monsters during the end phase, plus all their back row. And the majority, most of the time, they're probably gonna have two scales up. So they're gonna lose the two scales. They're gonna lose the free extra monsters, and they're gonna get. And they're only gonna draw two cards for it because they have to be returned to the deck. Um, now this d card does specify deck, so it means that uh, it means that they have to go back to the deck, which I really do like. Um, this card actually has promise for me, promise to me, because it's like, oh, I can essentially make you lose five cards um, for uh, two draws. Like I actually like that effect a lot because that's uh, that's an interesting effect to me. Being able to clear an entire board and giving your opponent maybe two resources at best that, that but they can't really utilize those resources because of what they've done, how they what they've lost in the process um, means that this is actually a really interesting thing to me. Like being seeing this like at first I didn't think this like at first time like I don't fit, I probably skimmed past this at first because I wasn't really interested in time lords right away. I just took a skim through to just see what there was and then and now that I see this this time lord is actually really interesting to me because it's like oh um I'm essentially going to but I'm essentially going to re, re make you restart I'm going to make you restart you're, you're not allowed the cards on your board you're gonna have to rebuild a board and if you got extra deck cards on the board you're punished for it I actually like this time lord a lot because this time lord actually has interesting effect has an interesting effect so this time lord is interesting to me this specific time lord is interesting to me I like this time lord I like what's doing um, it's not chain burn oriented thank the lord they're not all chain burn oriented it would have bored the crap out of me but yeah, so it seems like a n the new Water Time Lord, like Zavion, Zaf however you pronounce that last one, <laughs> um, the one that re returns all back row into the deck, um, this seems like the new Water one that's going to be played more to me. Now, sure, your opponent's going to get maybe um, five draws if you're playing against Paleo, uh, so just a, a certain amount of draws. Maybe your opponent's going to get a certain amount of draws from this, but... The fact that you can re make your opponent restart after they've lost all the resources that they had built up, such as extra cards and all of that, and if they're only getting a payback of maybe one to two cards, depending on if they're only playing an extra deck based deck, or if they've lost a ton of back row, then they may be going to get three, four best. Um, seeing that they're going to have to restart anyway, and because of this card, they're, they're not going to be gaining those resources back very easily, especially extra cards. It's really cool to see something like this around. Like, honestly, Gabriel and the Time Lord, you are the most interesting Time Lord I've seen. Um, you are the most interesting Time Lord I've seen, seeing as um, we've had Burn, Burn, and Burn, the Time Lords. Um, and this is just like, it's interesting to me.
this is the most interesting time to me. But yeah, guys, um, I'm going on on a tangent about this, and we're 60 minutes into the video, so I want to carry this on. But yeah, guys, this time lord is the most interesting to me so far. So let's get onto the time lord traps. Uh, so the first one is uh, <clears throat> non-existence, uh, non-existence, uh, continuous trap card cannot be destroyed by battle by an opponent's card effect. This card, this effect can only be used once while this card is face upon the field. Um, once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. Okay, uh, so I assume the first effect is going to have be on every other time lord card, trap card. Uh, you can t discard one level ten monster. Any Time Lord. Draw one card. Okay, so it's a one for one. Okay, decent. Um, if you control no, mo no other cards in your spend trap card zones, you can target one Time Lord monster in your graveyard, shuffle that monster into the deck, then you can set one Endless Emptiness from your deck, from your hand or deck. Now, the problem with this is the Time Lord has to be in the grave. Now, that, like, Time Lord monsters aren't normally going to the graveyard. Um, majority of the time, they're literally just going back to the deck. So, having something like this, that means they need to be in the graveyard, that can recite, that can set an endless emptiness, whatever that is, um, which I assume is the next trap card. Uh, it's not that great. Uh, honestly, I don't feel like this effect is good. Like, it takes a turn to set up, which I don't like. Sure, you can set up the level 10 to, uh, the level ten in the graveyard, the Time Lord in the graveyard, but I don't like the fact that it has to be in the graveyard to begin with. Um, if you could just instantly set the Endless Emptiness from deck, that'd be nice. Um, I feel, but and especially seeing as this is a trap card, you're gonna have to wait a turn to use it anyway. Um, I feel like if the Time Lord could already be in the graveyard, if it were, if you could just make it from hand, or even if the two effects were combined, I feel like that would make this card a better card. But and but non-existence, you're decent. I'm not gonna lie, it's a decent card uh, with the effect that it can, with the fact that it can few combine the two effects. Um, where you can discard the Time Lord to set up for the effect, but the fact that it's a trap card makes it too slow, um, and you can only use one of the effects per turn, so you're going to have to probably wait another turn to activate um, Endless Emptiness anyway. But, yeah guys, uh, next card, next trip card, Endless Emptiness, which is the next up, because it has the double circles, uh, the cards will all be on the screen. Um, uh, once per turn, this card can be destroyed by... Okay. Uh, you activate this card by sending one thing that's up non-existence from the spell and trap card zone to the graveyard. So it requires non-existence to use it, okay. Uh, once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by, by your, an opponent's card effect. Same effect. Uh, once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. During the player's turn, you can spend some one Time Lord monster from your hand. I like special summoning Time Lords from my hand. Have two Time Lords for the price of one. Um, and during your opponent's turn as well, so protection. Um, target one Time Lord monster in your graveyard, shuffle that monster into the deck, then you can set one infinite light from your deck, hand or deck, into to your spell and trap card zone. Again, it has to be from graveyard. The first one can set up it, can set it up. The first one can set up its effect at least. This one can't. This one cannot. I don't like that, in the slightest. If it didn't have to set it, send it from the graveyard back to deck, it would have been fine. If it could be from hand and graveyard, I feel like this card would be better. These cards could be a lot better with that effect. But anyway, let's get on to Infinite Light, which it actually plays. Um... Same effect as before, Infinite Light, you need to send a Endless Emptiness instead of Non-Existence to activate the card. So it has three, and it has three circles on it. Um, it cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects, same as the rest, uh, other traps. Um, Time Lord monsters you control cannot be targeted by your card effects. Also, neither player can return Time Lord monsters on the field to their decks. Okay. I like that effect. Um, I like that effect a lot, because if you can get infinite light and endless emptiness on board 
then essentially you can have a point where you have five Time Lords on board where your opponent can't stop them because they can't be targeted, they can't be destroyed, and they can't be just, yeah, they just can't be destroyed or targeted, which is really nice. I, I like that a lot. Um, so if you can get both this and Endless Emptiness on board, I, I feel like that would be nice. But again, the trap cards, so this is inherently slow. Um, once per turn, if you control no monsters, you can switch someone up to three time on monsters with different names, one each from your hand, deck, and or graveyard, ignoring the summoning conditions. Three of them things? You can summon three of them things? Oh, oh my god! I can summon three of them things! That's actually interesting. Um, Infinite Light. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this card. Th yeah, okay. That's a that's a worthy payoff. Um, so you're going from non-existence to endless emptiness to infinite light, and infinite light is broken. I would say infinite light is only broken because you can summon three time lord monsters from your hand, deck, and or graveyard, ignoring summoning conditions. If you manage to pull that off, GG, it's GG. That that that's actually really good. Um, I feel like, okay, now that I'm looking at this, uh, I'm actually interested. This makes all the other time worlds better, honestly. Um, if you can make a deck based around time worlds that can consistently make this, which will not happen, I can guarantee you that, um, because you would have to wait at least three turns to pull this off. Um, it would be amazing. But again, you need to send. To, you need to do time worlds from the graveyard. Um, but anyway, guys, all these cards are decent. All these cards. The first three time worlds that were burn, burn, and burn, um, are, all have their own right to be in chain burn. They all are very decent. Um, Mikion or Mi Michaelon, I, I don't know. However you pronounce their names. Michaelon, the like the fire one, the wind one, and the and the earth one, um, they all have their own right, and they're all really decent in their own ways. Um, they they sadly they're all chain burn support, which I personally don't like. Um, it's really interesting to see what they can do though, giving the giving my full opinion on them. Um, they're interesting to see, they're interesting to look at, and it's interesting to know that these cards are in the game. Um, I I really don't want to face them though because the chain burn is an annoying piece of crap. But they're all interesting. Um, my favorite one out of all of these is honestly uh, Gabrion. Uh, being able to just reset your opponent's entire board and just give them some draws is really nice in my opinion. Like, sure, if your opponent's playing a deck where they already have, like, three cards in hand, like, the, the card is pretty useless. But I feel like T Gabrion is really, really good. I feel like this card might even see some meta relevance just because of that. Um, being able to reset your opponent's entire board and have them lose their entire extra monsters that they summon. Like, against something like World Chalice, this de this will be broken because it's literally a neg five because they won't get any draws because they have to go back to the deck, um, not the extra deck, which is really, really good. And um, just the fact that... Uh, this card really does give the additional advantage. I feel like it's really, really cool. Um, the trap cards are really decent, I would say. The base one, being able to discard the Time Lord is the best part of that effect. Um, being able to discard and draw a card. The second effect, it's not good just because you have to send do from grave to deck. Same with the second one, um, the upgraded version. Having to use your graveyard is never good for this sort of thing. And I really don't think that's going to help a lot. But the final one, um, where uh, where you'll get, well, you can literally just summon three time lords from the deck. They're all protected uh, by by targeting, and they already have the mate built in protection. Um, I feel like that's going to be really powerful if you can actually get to that point. But yeah, guys, um, new time lord support. It's de it's really good. Um, I wouldn't say it's broken. Uh, the trap, the final form of the trap card is broken if you can get to the point. But that point, but the. Deck concept in general, it's not that broken. Um, chain burn additional cards are annoying, but again, they're interesting. Um, Gabrion is really nice in my opinion. I will probably pick up a few just because of what I can do. Um, but yeah, guys, um, tell me what you think of these time worlds in the comment section below. Tell me your full opinions on them. Give me your opinions. Again, sorry for 
the rambling and going on in the head of <coughs> And sorry for looking like a piece of crap, uh, I'm not very well right now, but I still wanted to bring you out a video uh, talking about these new interesting Time Lord cards. But yeah guys, that's the video, tell me what you think of them in the comment section below, tell me your opinions on them, tell me, give me your thoughts on them. Um, my personal opinion is these cards are very interesting, they have a lot of potential. Um, the Chainburn ones, I don't like it, but they're here now. Um, but yeah guys, that's the video. Tell me what you think of it in the conversation below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Robot One signing out. Time Lords, why you gotta be burn? Why? Bye guys. Robot One signing out. Thanks for watching guys, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video for more Yu-Gi-Oh videos, and check out the links in the description for the previous video, and the link to my Facebook page where you can see previous videos that I've posted there, and any other information that I may have posted there. I hope to see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.